I want to jump on and do a breaking news segment about this Harris Waltz rally that just took place in the wake of I can't even control my emotions right now. I'm deliriously happy watching this rally. We're witnessing history. Okay, I get that there's credibility that comes along with always being able to stay level-headed, sort of detaching yourself from the emotions of these political situations. I can't do that on this. I'm so amazed. I'm so amazed at what we're witnessing right now. And you're going to see what I mean if you didn't watch this already. Um, I have some clips. This just happened. But you can feel, you can feel the history, the shift. You know, interestingly enough, my dear mother has said my entire life that when someone comes along as hateful and divisive and painful as Trump, at least it's her belief that there has to be a swing. There has to be a pendulum swing. And it's a time like that. It's in that darkness when if we have this option a compelling light can really take off, right? You can really resonate with people. It's often moments of progress and breaking barriers can often come amid darkness. And seeing that here, I should say this way, that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing something shocking. And some of this is hard to really put into words so let's just go ahead and play moments uh and yes i'm gonna be fanboying over this it's just i can't help myself there's something happening here here's vice president kamala harris and minnesota governor tim waltz walking out for the first time as a joint ticket at this rally listen to the crowd Oh, by the way, if we ever cut to the side camera and you see this sitting here, I was so, this is so random, so I'll go back and watch this, but I was watching the rally and I was just so invested and I was cutting something, cut my finger. So uh, this is to soak up the blood when it comes out, but it's all good. My finger's already sort of healing, but here we go. And then they go out on stage and you know the phrase, is it happy warrior, a happy warrior? That's what we're seeing here. And actually, let me skip forward to Tim Waltz's speech at the very beginning because he says something that, that very much bolsters what we'll then circle back to. Wow. Thank you, Philadelphia. Thank you, Madam Vice President, for the trust you put in me, but maybe more so, thank you for bringing back the joy. So, we have some serious, serious issues to deal with. We're talking about pain of a massive magnitude that we want to address matters of life and death and we're going up against such a dangerous movement in this election so we have important issues we need to address making victory so important and a movement that's just so hateful and divisive so it's not taking any of that lightly to celebrate that there's this newfound joy in the fight, the political fight, in the work. And that's what he's tapping into. 
And I think what's going to be so consequential and why we're going to win is the contrast between the darkness and hate and division and demonization and hope for retribution on the part of the Trump side. And that going up against a much more hopeful, unifying, joyful movement. And here's some of that from Kamala Harris. And after all, you know, the promise of America is what makes it possible for two middle-class kids, one a daughter of Oakland, California, who was raised by a working mother, the other a son of the Nebraska Plains who grew up working on a farm, It's the promise of America, because only in America, only in America, is it possible for them together to make it all the way to the White House. If you would be so kind and you're not already and subscribe to the channel, I would greatly appreciate just by clicking that subscribe button. Easy, free, but it makes quite the difference. Back to the video. Only in America. That's right. And so Coach Walls and I may hail from different corners of our great country, but our values are the same. And we both believe in lifting people up, not knocking them down. He and I, we both know the vast majority of people in our country have so much more in common than what separates them. When we look at folks, we see in our fellow Americans neighbors, not enemies. Not enemies. And she goes on to say, but I'll move on since we have so much to look at, that my promise to you is this. Our campaign will reach out to everyone from red states to blue states, from the heartland to the coast. We're running a campaign on behalf of all Americans. And if elected, we will govern on behalf of all Americans. One thing I really liked about that clip, too, is, is we've talked so much about how I hate that, uh, uh, honestly, a lot of people, at least that I'm coming in contact with online, have given up on trying to take back the patriotism label. Or they've given up on even caring about associating with that term at all, being patriots. And I've never understood that because, to me, the policies we advocate on behalf of are both the sign of a movement that wants to make our great country better which is a sign of love for that country and the underlying motivation to even go through the ups and downs of this to care so much about politics is because we love our country and we see what makes it special and that usa chant along with the words that she was saying i think is a sign of something vice president kamala harris is making a real effort is very intentionally I'm noticing in her speeches, uh, in doing, which is taking back that label, the freedom label. A big part of our speech is we're going to take back uh, our rights and we're going to advocate on behalf of freedom and liberty and patriotism. Those are our values. So just because there was a long-term branding exercise by Republicans to say they exclusively hold those terms doesn't mean we're going to allow them to be the only ones then tim walls during his speech said this so funny so funny like all regular people i grew up with in the heartland jd studied at yale had his career funded by silicon valley billionaires 
and then wrote a bestseller trashing that community. Come on! That's not what middle America is. And I gotta tell you, I can't wait to debate the guy. You're not ready for this. You're not ready. <laughs> that is if, you, if he's willing to get off the couch and show up. So. <laughs> you see what I did there? Oh my gosh. So crowd going wild in reference to the JD Vance rumors that I don't think are true, but that randomly got started that he was doing um um sexual things with couches at some point in, in college again. That seemed to be just a completely bogus rumor, but a hilarious, hilarious joke referencing the couch there. And again, this message of unity, I need y'all to understand. Sometimes People, and actually Tim Waltz puts it in a really good way, we have to learn how to compromise without compromising our values. And what that means is there are some people who care so much about litmus tests, care so much about being 100% perfect and pure on everything that often they won't go out to vote for that reason because that person's not good enough. Or if they're elected leaders themselves, They'll not do the necessary bipartisanship to get things done. But sometimes people take that term compromise and use it as justification to just not do great stuff and to not try that hard because, well, I'm, you know, I'm just trying to compromise, not rock the boat. But you can understand the importance of reaching across the aisle. And sometimes you don't get everything you want, but you get some of what you want without compromising your values. It's a similar thing with unity. We do want to be the movement, this pro-democracy movement, because the core of what defines us, especially in this political moment, is a very unifying set of values, namely our dedication to democracy and basic rights. And Republicans, independents, and Democrats alike can unite around that. But we have to understand that we're uniting around something. That's what makes the unity valuable. The second that we give up on, and you're going to see more pretty aggressive rhetoric here in a second, on opposing what needs to be opposed for the sake of progress, then the unity is worthless. And so I really do invite, if you're MAGA, former MAGA, soon to be former MAGA, hopefully, and you want to unite with us, you're welcome. But we're not going to sacrifice our values just for the sake of meaningless unity. And so they're striking this perfect balance that I've wanted so badly. I didn't know how badly I wanted this until now. Okay. Uh, it's like the reverse of you don't know what you had until you lost it. I didn't know how bad I wanted this until I got it. But they're balancing a message that is one that most Americans can unite around. The vast, vast majority. If they weren't being fed misinformation by the Fox News and, and the like while also running an aggressive campaign against what we don't want to unite with, which are these, these fundamentally contradictory values to ours. Here's more. Some of us, some of us in here are old enough to remember. I see you down there. I see those old white guys. Some of us are old enough to remember. <laughs> when it was Republicans, who were talking about freedom. It turns out now, what they meant was the government should be free to invade your doctor's office. In Minnesota, we respect our neighbors and their personal choices that they make. Even if we wouldn't make the same choice for ourselves, there's a golden rule. Mind your own damn business. It's just... Let me quickly pull up um, so I can reference this because this is this just captured it, I have to say. Uh, I posted on X this. What's this feeling? I don't recognize it. It's strange. Hope? Overflowing optimism? 
that's what I, I feel weird. Ah, what's going on? What am I feeling? If you, if you're as old as me, then you understand. No, uh, if you've been invested in politics for an extended period of time, you know how tiring it can be. I love it because it's so important, and I get to do this dream job, etc. But also, it just it, it, you have a burden on you that others don't, as I'm sure you're aware. I have friends who just don't keep up with politics, and sometimes. I envy them because they're just da, 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 not understanding or having to deal with the daily stress of, of this. And maybe sometimes we should detach a little bit more, to be honest. But uh, I think one of the things that's so exciting is that there's all these things I've wanted different. You know how constantly I'll say, and these strong democratic leaders with their flaws, and I'm referencing all these things I wish could be different, but all right, politics isn't perfect. Fine. And while, of course, these two individuals are also far from perfect, so many of the box that were unchecked, in my mind, in how they were handling things, their behavior on the campaign trail, the style of governance I think we would see, all these little things are there now. And so whenever you're reflecting on, again, I think a lot of you will relate to this, month after month and year after year of just stress to then be smacked in the face with this much hope and optimism and just we know we're observing history in the making is really honestly a little bit shocking uncomfortable even because <laughs> i I'm, I'm scared it's gonna go away i don't want to lose it but it's very very wonderful Here's another, oh, I'm sorry, here's another little quip from Tim Walls. Now, Donald Trump sees the world a little differently than us. First of all, he doesn't know the first thing about service. Let me see for the sake of time if I can skip forward. He mocks our laws. He sows chaos and division, and that's to say nothing of his record as president. He froze in the face of the COVID crisis. He drove our economy into the ground, and make no mistake, violent crime was up under Donald Trump. That's not even counting the crimes he committed. <laughs> yeah. Brutal. 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 Here was a portion of Kamala Harris's speech. With his experience, I'm telling you, Tim Walls will be ready on day one. In fact, when you compare his resume <laughs> shall we <laughs> to Trump's running mate well 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 some might say it's like like a matchup between the varsity team and the JV squad. <laughs> and that's in reference to Tim Walls being a former coach and uh, teacher. I, I do want to summarize th both Tim Walls and Kamala Harris. I just can't help myself. I'm taking so long on this. I'm sorry. Uh, they're both, they were both complimentary, uh, complimenting in a very noticeable way and justified way josh shapiro the governor of pennsylvania because he was sort of it was probably gonna be shapiro or walls by the end and it was important and i'm glad they did it to show how much they're going to be working with josh shapiro between now and the election and afterwards and how much they respect him 
to make sure that that partnership is also there because of his popularity in Pennsylvania, efficacy as governor, and the fact that some were upset that it wasn't him uh, and it's Tim Walls. And he showed up in an introduction speech for then the two of them and brought the fire. Are you ready to do your part? Are you ready to form a more perfect union? Are you ready to build an America where no matter what you look like, where you come from, who you love or who you pray to, that this will be a place for you? And are you ready to look the next president of the United States in the eye and say, hello, Madam President. I am too, so let's get to work. (laughs) This is bonkers. This is bonkers with a capital B. Let me tell you. And Josh Shapiro has been giving a bunch of fiery speeches, which is why his voice is is cracking. But that adds to it. This is... I don't know when was the last time we saw something like this. This is a movement. By the way, if you want to donate to the campaign in a way that contributes to our goal, which is raising a million dollars by a million subscribers. You can do so by clicking, the video is not over, I just wanted to mention this now, Uh, the link in the description of this video. This is something else. This is something else. Here is Kamala Harris introducing Tim Walsh. Just her her fire as well is awesome. Sure. And with that, I ask Pennsylvania, are you ready to make your voices heard? Do we? to say just take it in and take it to work you know what I'm saying because I do think this is going to be definitely something that's circled and underlined in the history books Um, and there's so much I miss you can go watch the full speech because it's such a good blend of the general things, right? What, what does it mean to believe in freedom? But it's still hype to say that and, and have people cheer that loudly. But she also went through, because this was a big thing about Walls in her selection of him, and listed a bunch of the things he's done in Minnesota. And then at her rally, she's been talking about what she would do as president. And we have this blend of, of energy and your big, bold value statements and nitty-gritty policy statements that are awesome. And I just can't fathom that this is where we are. And I just, I see people saying sometimes when I get this hyped, no, we can't get complacent. Don't act like it's a sure thing. I'm not acting like that. I'm saying we got it, but we got to do the stuff to make sure that actually manifests. But the possibility is so there. Kamala Harris is now taking a lead in the real clear politics average of polls. Incredible. And then we got to go do the work on the ground. But we have not just negative motivation because of the, the opposite. And I'm always advocating on behalf of the positive motivation that we had. But now a lot of people are resonating with that more than, than before. And for that, I'm very grateful. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you want to get extra content and support the work we do, you can do this by clicking the join button below.